Welcome back to the Belted Galloway Homestead. My high efficiency Lennox furnace stopped working this winter and I debated whether or not to do a uh, video on it but then I remembered how important it is to be self-reliant on the homestead uh, whether you have a plan B to heat your house which I do uh, with a fireplace in case the furnace goes down uh, but also uh, being able to be self-sufficient on uh, repairing things. Um, you may not always have a um, service technician to call to come and fix these things. So I thought I'd do a video to show you what I found, what I've done, and see if it helps somebody out. Let's take a look. So the front cover pops off pretty easy. Pops off like so. And what it was doing is it would go through its cycle. It would uh, attempt the light. You could see the pilot in there. And then it would stop working. And, you know, get online, you do some investigating. And then also was throwing, it was throwing this E125 code. Control self check. Internal air, felt hardware, and such. And usually when it goes through its start cycle and prevents the to light, it throws on a pilot, you can see it, and then uh, it prevents the valve from staying open. Normally it's one of the flame rod sensors um, that could be dirty. So that's the first thing I started. And uh, it happens to be back here. Uh, behind this cover, it goes in there, sits next to the to the burner to indicate that you have a flame. So I have a spare one here. Um, I ordered one just to have on hand, just in case, because these can go bad. But I just know it's a a flame sensing indicator so what do you do is you clean these up you can take a uh, i take a very fine uh, steel wool and i clean the uh the soot off the end of that and uh, i did that and it seemed to fix it and it ran for three days with no issues and then it started up again and um so then I like, hmm. So then yeah, what I do next is I'll go look up the uh, the model number of the uh, furnace. I'll go to Lennox webpage or go to one of the other pages that sells uh, parts. Start doing a little investigating and that. And uh, what I indicated is uh, it just had a bad control board and it finally Finally just totally failed instead of being intermittent. Let me get this cover off here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you take the couple screws off there and the cover lifts up similar to the other one. And that gets you inside to the uh, controls and where the fan is on the, on the furnace. This plunger button here will prevent it from starting up. So if you're working on your furnace and you've got that cover off, um, that will prevent it from starting up. Also, there's a, a little three amp breaker there that'll throw. But on the, um, on the control board, there's a uh, device there that reads out letters and numbers and you can see it through that peephole right here and as I said it was it was throwing the code of uh, E125 saying it had a bad control board so you get on uh, you get on the internet and you find it and you find a part number for uh, for this control board here and you look and I found that it was uh, discontinued so 
who knows what it would have cost if I had called a uh, an HVAC technician out to get work done. They might have told me it was obsolete and I needed a new furnace. Who knows? Uh, and I'm not an I'm not an HVAC expert, but uh, I got a little bit of experience with uh, electrical. But um, I bought a uh, I bought a new control board, and then um, like I said, was able to heat my house with a fireplace while I was waiting for it to come. And got a new control board and swapped it out. And what I would suggest if you're doing something like this is that you get you some wire markers. You can get them in books that fold or or they're long strips, but they're they're basic little stickers. And wherever there was a wire indicator there, you know, W1, W2, G, and so. Mark those wires so there's no confusion on where they go back. And in some places I had more than one wire, so uh, so you have to have to keep track of all that. Um, the rest of them basically just pull out with connectors. Just pull out. These all just pull out. Big connector there. But these were individual down here on this. Um, and then I did see, in investigating this online, I did see a guy having a video uh, on this particular furnace in this board where he just basically said, uh, got a control fault, board's bad, replaced the board, and, uh, and it's fixed. You know, and it's a little more complicated than that. And that's why I wanted to, I thought, well, I'll do this video and, and maybe, maybe somebody that's having this issue won't, won't miss some other steps. So let me get uh, let me get my hand on the uh, the control board so I can show it to you. So here's the old control board. It basically just snaps in place in that metal bracketry back there. Pretty easy swap out. I was able to find one on uh, on eBay and uh, change it out pretty easily. There is uh, the mine came with a instruction sheet. Because these can be used like mine is, just with a you know a furnace, um, central air. It also be used with a heat pump, and so, so, um, you got on the instructions there. It may show you, but you've got a section over here that you can cut depending on whether you got a heat pump, two stage, and some other some other options that this board's used. So be aware of that. On your old board, if any of these are cut, you need to match that. And then uh, one other item to look at here is these dip switches. So, see if I can get that focused in there. You can see number two there on this dip switch was thrown. Uh, number nine and ten. And then there wasn't any thrown on that other dip switch uh, bank of switches there. So this, this you know, changes circuitry, programming uh, for, the, for the board to run for your situation. So I would play attention to that. I took the new board. None of those are, uh, none of those are turned, but uh, you just take, and take a little sharp object and, and flip them to match what your board does. And then it's just as simple as popping it in place. Connecting the wires where you uh, where you done your your wire marking there. Connect all your connections back. I say take some take some photos of before and after, just to make sure that you're good. And that's basically what I done to replace my uh, replace my own control board, and it solved my problem. Furnace been running good, and uh, not had any issues. So. Again, I hope this helps. Uh, please subscribe. Give me some comments. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to put some information in there of what model number this furnace is and the part number for the circuit board to see if it helps anybody in a particular situation. So, thanks for watching.